Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives, where you join me out in Southern California experiencing my first Aston Martin. This is the 2024 DBX 707, and it's the first Aston Martin that I've ever driven. I drove it from the airport yesterday, got some super initial impressions on the car, but you all are gonna ride along with me today for some raw first impressions and some performance driving impressions as we're about to go on a bit of a canyon drive. We're out with Charlie from Daily Motor over there in the red Bentley convertible and Tedward in the Lamborghini Huracan Storado. We're gonna go out for a drive, do some switcheroos, swap cars around. This video will only be on the DBX, but look for videos on both of those cars as well. So what makes the 707 special? What sets it aside? Well, over just the standard DBX, we've got about 150 more horsepower, and that is due to the four liter AMG derived V8 receiving some bigger turbos, uh, and they've had it tuned up to 697 horsepower and 663 pound feet of torque. Power is sent to all four wheels in this car via a nine speed automatic transmission, but that has been slightly changed as well. As we no longer have a torque converter, we now have a wet clutch. It's still the same nine speed unit that you get in the regular car, but gear changes come off a little bit quicker and snappier, and it launches this thing from zero to 60 in just about three seconds, which is just insane to think about for an SUV, but I've gotta say, I think this is the best handling SUV that I've ever driven. And honestly, looking at it, proportionally, it kind of looks more like a wagon. They haven't really ruined the signature Aston Martin looks with this DBX. So let's take a quick little poke around this thing. These are just my favorite days ever when I'm out here, Southern California. I've got a beautiful day. I guess there's a couple clouds, but two of my best friends in the world doing their intros, and this is just so cool. So here's our back uh, cargo area, I suppose, um, space. We have a spare wheel in this car. It's bright red, and you can see I've got enough room for my backpack back here. We have a privacy shade, which is wrapped in leather, of course. And we also have an adjustment back here for our ride height if you are loading or unloading any groceries or suitcases or whatever. And the blue on this thing is absolutely stunning. This car as tested is about $266,000. Oh man, let's check out the back seat. We have really nice contrast blue stitching in this car. It's a $2,000 option. And we have swan doors on this thing. Actually, before we check out the back seat, let's open up both doors and you can see the, the dual swan doors in action here. <laughs> yes, look at that. Such a cool look. Frameless doors as well. And they're held open by a piston. They don't have a normal door check like you'd have on most cars. We have this piston here. You can see that shut when I close the door, the piston closing. In the back seat of the DBX, it's kind of refreshing. And that's because we don't have any sort of silly stadium seating back here. I'm sat nice and low down. I've got plenty of legroom and a ton of headroom, even considering this thing has a massive glass pano roof. Interestingly enough, I can lock and unlock the doors from the back seat. We also have two USB-A ports and some vents. And I imagine this lights up as a little climate control panel when the car is on the move. Fold on armrest. Good stuff. So today we're just gonna pretty much go for a drive in this thing. And you know, sometimes we gotta take a break from the road trips, a break from the commutes. But honestly, I don't think this will be too much different because we're still going on a bit of a journey with, uh, with the guys. So before we set off, let's just take a peek at this four liter V8. Stay. Hood pop is on the passenger side. Thank you, Great Britain. I want to show you all Scott Bowen's masterpiece here. Thank you, Scott, for doing that. What a beautiful engine bay. Just a plastic cover there on the sides, but uh, look at those turbos. We have some functional vents here on the hood. Man, excuse my boyish excitement here. I just, I've never, I've never driven an Aston Martin until yesterday and 
Um, I'm actually gonna throw in some super raw first impressions at the end of the video. I threw the camera on when I was leaving the airport yesterday and I figured I would give you guys a taste of uh, my super raw first impression. So if you wanna stick around for that, it'll be at the very end. It's Tedward and I leaving the airport. Hop it in to the DBX. We have these door handles that sit flush when you're on the move. Let our door stay open there. We'll take a look at our front seats. Beautiful design. We've got nice blue contrast stitching, Aston Martin embossed there on the headrest. While they are very beautiful, they are quite stiff. So I'm gonna try not to get backache today. I did yesterday on the way back from the airport. They're just kind of hard seats. I don't really know how else to describe it. They're very sporty and they look cool. Not the most comfortable thing in the world. Jumping in here and everything to me at first I thought was very unfamiliar. Uh, until I looked down and saw that some of this is just pulled from Mercedes, or at least inspired by Mercedes, and this is not a touchscreen. So, learned that the hard way yesterday. I was putting my grubby fingers all over it, and I'm sure the commenters will have a field day with that at the end of the video. Uh, not an incredible door close sound, but the good thing is we have soft closed doors in this DBX, so no need to slam. We have our traditional Aston Martin crystal start-stop button. Unfortunately, you don't push the key in there anymore to start it, but it does still look cool, and it turns red when you put your foot on the brake. Not a ton of noise from this 4-liter V8 upon startup. Even in cold start, it's pretty reserved, but when you put it into its Sport Plus drive mode, Things change quite a bit. Soft limiter there at 3,500 RPM, but uh, it makes quite a good noise. But it's nice, you kind of have that Jekyll and Hyde personality. You can turn it on and, and off whenever you want to. I will say, Apple CarPlay is very annoying to try and connect. I've got my phone plugged in here. Why will you not just come up on the screen? Yes, I would like Apple CarPlay. Camera quality is decent. We have a 360 camera. Gives you lines. One thing I will say, shifter, very far away. Um, if you are a shorter person, I suppose you'd have the seat further forward, but it's a little bit out of reach, I suppose. When you're actually stopping, it's no big deal to just lean forward and use it, and uh, it does look pretty cool as well with the start-stop button. Pretty light steering, easy to maneuver around the parking lot. Tight turning circle. Greetings. What's up? You guys ready to roll? Yes. Uh, Bentley suits you. I love it. Fantastic. You just presented the seatbelt. I don't need a nose lift. No, you don't with that. It's so funny, when you're behind me, all I can see is the roof rack. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that I am very picky on my steering feel for these luxury SUVs, and I've gotta say, this one is weighted a little heavier than I would like, only by about 10 or 20%, but the quickness of this rack is absolutely spot on and maneuvering this thing around a parking lot, it feels luxurious. You can tell that you're in something expensive. Pretty quiet window motors. see any point in driving around in GT mode. It's quiet, it's reserved, it does a great job of just being quiet and being transportation, but that's not entertaining on camera. So let's just go straight for Sport Plus. Let's tap this button right here in the middle. That will lock us into manual mode. We have these really cool column-mounted paddle shifters that are just an absolute treat.
I am generally a child uh, when it when it comes to cars like this, and uh, this car brings out your inner child when you're in Sport Plus mode. <laughs> It's a throaty noise from this thing. You feel sinister in this car. And what a car. Oop, I should just stop talking. I love when cars can just speak for themselves. What I absolutely love about this DBX 707 is that it's an SUV where you can drive it quickly, you can put it in all of its sport modes, and you don't feel like you're pretending, you don't feel like a poser. This feels like a proper sports car. We've got a four corner air suspension, we've got adaptive dampers. On to the brakes, little squirmy there, a little bit of a soft pedal. <laughs> what a machine, what a machine. Plenty of torque low down. of induction noise and noise from those turbos, man. I don't know that I've ever been in another SUV that just rips off gear changes like this car. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Such a grunty, angry noise from this thing, too. And not a ton of noise. I mean, it isn't the loudest thing in the world, but it sounds pretty good here inside the cabin. The seating position is nice. The dashboard position is nice. Visibility, it's okay. The rear window's kind of small, but it does the job. The torque here is really the hero. I mean, you can be in pretty much any gear, put your foot down, and uh, you're gone. We should talk about just the cool factor of this Aston Martin. I mean, do you see a lot of these, you know, do you see as many DBXs as you see G-Wagons or Range Rovers or even Lamborghini Urises? No, you don't. So you've got that bit of uniqueness there. And I think that they have really, like I said earlier, they've nailed the styling on this car. That is intoxicating and very addicting. <laughs> yeah, we're now getting to the part in the journey where, obviously, the video is not an hour long, but I have been sitting in this Aston Martin for oh, about an hour and a half, and yeah, it's a little bit uncomfortable. If I'm just, I'm being honest. As ride quality goes, the air suspension, the adaptive dampers, they do a fantastic job of soaking up these bumps. The only thing that I will say is the wheels are quite large and the Pirelli tires, you've got a bit of road noise with these, but this car is just, it just seems like it's good at everything, which you'd expect it to be for almost $300,000, so, you know, check that box. Yeah, the way the 
this thing corners and it's just completely flat. You've got hardly any body roll from a pretty sizable SUV. It's, it's madness. Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives. Today you join me in the lower level three section of the Sepulveda parking garage in Los Angeles where I am having my first ever Aston Martin experience. It was, that looks really good. It was supposed to be red, but it showed up in its blue. It's okay. I, in typical Tedward fashion, end up in a white on red car because it's <laughs> the right. only thing I'm allowed to drive, apparently. I'm out here with Tedward this week, <laughs> and uh, we've also got the Maserati Gran Turismo. Dude, this thing sounds amazing. Hang on, I've got it in corset mode. <laughs> It's not bad. It's not as good as the old uh, Gran Turismo, though. I'm sure there's maybe a way to make it even better. I just haven't learned yet. Yeah. But, you know, well, we'll, we'll get there. Anyways, uh, first Aston Martin experience today. I gotta say, normally when a company like maybe Bentley with the Bentayga or Lamborghini with the Urus, it's like a little disappointing yeah. when your first experience with those cars is their SUVs. But like the DBX, from memory, it's been a little while, but I really enjoyed that car. It's a nice, like, long, low platform. It's a, it, 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 it really does feel like an Aston Martin, in my humble opinion. I'm excited to drive the 707 later. You are kind of the expert. I have driven everything, and I'm kind of an Aston <laughs> hater, honestly, and that one I think is pretty good. So okay. we'll see if that holds up later. Not bad. I don't know how to work anything in here. All right, here we go. My maiden voyage in an Aston Martin. Got loud exhaust mode, that's required, of course. Apologies for being in rare form today. Usually I drive the cars before I film them. Ooh, very quick steering rack. Not the lightest steering in the world, but feels to be pretty precise here at eight miles per hour. not to crash the $300,000 SUV into the $200,000 sports Grand Tourer. Ooh, turn signals like a heartbeat. I actually don't know if Tom knows his way out of here. And that's still on, okay. I quite like the turn signal. It's a, it's a bit like a heartbeat like a squirrel's heartbeat or something. I promise you guys I'm not being stupid either. I have absolutely no idea how to work the infotainment. I just, nothing does anything. Oh, I think it's, that's why it might not be a touch screen. I've gotten the cast of peanuts to do the voiceovers here. You're so welcome. All right. Off we go. We are in the wild with a Aston Martin. Oh, I've got a ton of different drive modes here. Let's go for sport. Why not? This feels luxurious. As Tom was saying earlier in his little snippet, I am driving in two lanes, so I apologize for that. As Tom was saying earlier in his little piece to camera at the beginning of my video, some of these higher end sports car manufacturers, when they go out to make SUVs, they are a bit of a disappointment, but getting in this car, there's just, I don't know, it's this feeling of everything being very hard to like push on if that makes sense. And also the steering weight is another big teller that this is going to be a good car. I, I can feel it already. I think this is the most raw my impressions have ever been on a car. I'm absolutely staggered right now that I'm in an Aston Martin. That's just, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> oh, hold on. This is important work now. Hold on. Support. Oh yeah. 
I am a child, I really... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh, okay, this is quick. This is quick. <laughs> I love Aston Martins. All right, let's try some grand touring. Now that we are on the highway, get you guys some. Oh, look at the wipers. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll get you some raw first impressions here on the highway. I'll give you a second to observe NVH. Not too bad. I think the road surface here is most of the noise. All of this is very Mercedes in here, and that's not to say that you know, everything about this car is Mercedes, apart from the engine and the transmission, but the actual skeleton of the car, the platform, the body, everything is unique to Aston Martin. Everything is tuned over in Great Britain and everything is bespoke to them apart from the engine and transmission, but they do have their own tune on it. They've had it tuned themselves. This is kind of the unfortunate reality of Los Angeles. You get here and you think, oh yes, I'm gonna go for the best drive of my life. And then it's just this. Looks like we do have some driver aids in here. Uh, I don't know how to work any of them. We've got this button here, that. Oh, it's a DB5. Check that out. Oh, that is just the coolest thing. So you can make, you can decide how, although the buttons don't actually, hey, oh, okay, I see. You have to do a little bit of a harder press. So you can choose how much distance you want how much distance your DB5 should have from the DB5 in front of you. Oh, that is just so cool. I love little touches like that in cars. This is a cool car. What a cool feeling. drive this thing, oh, thank you. You can still drive this quite comfortably, even in Sport Plus mode. Yeah, the ride gets stiffer, but it's not break your back stiff. noise from the brakes. Okay, let's put ourselves back into a neighborhood friendly drive mode. GT. It's his brakes too. I was like, what am I hearing? <laughs> we both have a case of the squeaky brakes. What does that turn signal sound like? It's like somebody smacking a bass drum over and over. Tunk, 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 tunk. Ooh, quite like that door handle. Haven't been able to use that yet. <laughs> what a thing. Cool, all right, well, we're gonna get our house stuff figured out. And I imagine 
This will all be in one video and I'll let you all resume back to the spirited driving section here of the DBX 707. All right guys, well, what about some final thoughts here on the DBX? Well, honestly, I think I've pretty much summed up my opinions on this car, but if I had to summarize again, I would say that this is an absolutely epic package. I mean, going into this, I wasn't expecting to super enjoy this car up on the canyon roads because, you know, all of these big sports car brands that make SUVs, they're never really that good. Sure, they can be really fast in a straight line and they can be bonkers to look at, but you never really get that sense that they've been made to do stuff like this, but the DBX 707 feels like it is. It feels like it's been made for this and I mean, I've never driven another SUV that corners as flat as this one. I mean, that that's just that. Not to mention all of the beautiful interior materials in this car. The steering wheel, which does kind of remind me of one from a Volvo, but that's not a bad thing. I like this sort of stitching that you get here on the front of the wheel to kind of um, section it a little bit. Charlie's putting his roof down. My hands are sweating a little bit. That's normal. Big brake dive from the Storado there. Not to mention, this gearbox is just fabulous. I mean, the tuning, everything about it is just about perfect. It's just immediate. It, there's, I've never had a miss shift. It doesn't shift too harshly. Yeah. And the only thing I don't like is the seats. I am a bit uncomfortable, but... That's okay because it looks like we're ending. So that'll wrap it up for us today. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little first impressions bit as well, leaving the airport. Um, just a little bit of a candid moment with Tedward and I. But uh, that'll wrap it up here for the DBX 707. Let's hop out and give you one last look here at the DBX. Ooh, the fans are screaming. Yes. All right, cool guys. Well, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I'm going to keep having fun, but uh, take care. <laughs>